Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. Today we are going to build a full-fledged event management system using Spring Boot for the backend and Angular for the frontend. Whether you are a beginner or experienced developer, this tutorial guide you through the each step. So let's start with it. So what we need to do first of all? First of all we need to set up the project. So how we are going to set up the project? So there are two types of project. One is the for front end and another one is the for back end. So if you talked about the project details that first of all we need to create the Spring Boot application and then we are going to create the Angular project. So how we are going to create the Spring Boot project? So we, we can go to the Spring Initializer then we need to select the project as Marvin then language Java, Spring Boot latest stable version and dependencies we need to choose. What are the dependencies basically required? As we are going to create the REST APIs, so that's why we need to use the Spring Web, Spring Data JPA. As a database, I am going to use the MySQL, so that's why the MySQL driver is needed. So if we talked about the like uh, architecture of it is, like we are going to create two controller. One is the user controller, another one is the event controller. The user controller is able to taken care of the if like we want to register the user into that particular system then that create user will be taken care of this one if we want to get the user by the username that will be the another API get all user and the delete user so these are the feature we are going to implement under this spring like this user controller and the event controller it will taken care all the operations related to the event like if we want to create a new event then this create event API will be getting called then get all events it will basically fetch all the events which are already in the database those actually fetch by this get all events get events by ID it will fetch only the single records update event and the delete event so event related all the operations we need to done under this event controller controller class so where we need to defining all the APIs so this is about this Spring Boot project other than this we need the two entities for this Spring Boot project one is the user which will store the user details another one is the event which will store the event related details so this is about this Spring Boot project and now if we talked about the angular project over there we need to defining multi functionalities like login so where user can do the login if they already register if they do not register then for them the registration functionality is over there from where user can do the registration so once user can do the login on the registration so after login they can see different types of menus like creating the event if they want to view the event or the event list event list means if there is a multiple events then user can get those events in a, as a list manner so that they can able to get all the events at a glance so this is about this angular project so as angular i am using the angular 18 version and as a spring boot the latest stable version that i am going to use so this is about the project details in next what we are going to do we are just going to create the project so first of all we need to create the spring boot application and then going to use the angular project so that we can communicate from the angular to the spring boot application so this is all about this one in next we are going to create the project so without further ado let's create the project so here if you see that i have already created one spring boot application that is called the event management system so where already like that project already I've created from the spring initializer from here you can also create the project so over there what dependencies I choose actually that already I mentioned in the demonstration slide over there like the spring boot starter web data JPA and then the important is the MySQL connector okay so these are the important one that I have added over here so I'm not going into the more detail of it is as a Java version I'm using the 17 and the Spring Boot version is a 3.3.5 this is the latest table version okay so next we need to defining the like uh, which database uh, properties few database properties we need to defining over here so as if we can see 
first of all we need to defining the database URL data source URL so this is the properties using that we can showing that uh, Spring Boot data source like where basically we need to store the data then username password that can be changed whatever the you need to set the username and password in your case that you can define over here and this will as I mentioned many times for my other project that this property will once we create the entities over here then once we start the application it will automatically create those entities into the database we don't need to create entities manually into the database so that's why we need to keep this property into the properties file so this is all about this database one in next what we need to do actually basically so first of all let's create the entity so as I said for this event management system what entities we need we need two types of two entities basically right so for keeping the entities that's why we need to create separate package over here let's say entity okay entity so we can segregate in a such a manner so that we can easily understand so here we need to create two entities one is the event another one is the user so in the event table what we need to keep like this is the ID which will be the auto generated then name the event name then location and the date okay like, like which date that particular event will be happen so that I just kept it as simple so that we can easily manage those things and as a user like we can keep the ID and the username and the password okay the rest of the part we can define in the letter part but for the timing we are just keeping this a uh, simplicity okay next we need to defining the repository package where we need to keep all the repository related to the whenever we are going to do some kind of the database operations then we need the help for the repository okay so here we need to create two repositories one is the event repositories another one is the user repository so if you open it this event repository which will extend this jpa repository where actually all the default matters over there like get uh, find by id find all okay so these are the and user repository here we have created only one method that find by username which basically we need to used from the controller or the service layer so after that we need to create the service layer okay so let me create another package where we need to kept all the service layer so first of all we need to create that user service class where we need to keep all the user related operations okay so let me explain so here if you see that we need to annotate this particular class with service annotation over here we need to use this user repository so one is the for saving the user based on this repository we need to save the data into the database next one if we want to search the user by the username then we need to use this find by username and it will return the user so that we can use this one another one is a get all user so find all method this is the default method we have not defining this one in the de under this repository so this will be automatically as we have used the jpa repository right and then delete user next one the event service this event service basically having the similar kind of things get all events create events get event by id if we want to update the event then first of all we need to fetch the event by id and then we are setting all the updated information into this event existing event and then we are updating the data into the database next we are going to create the controller because all this method we need to call from the controller so as i mentioned there is a two controller one is the user controller another is the event controller okay so let me create another package controller okay here we need to like uh, keep first of all that user controller and this user controller having basically create user get user by user by username get all user and the delete user so this method we need to kept over here the create user if you see that rest controller request mapping this annotation we need to kept because it will be behave as a rest apis the cross origin annotation mentioned because we are going to call this particular api from the angular 
so if we not mention this cross origin then we will face the cross origin issues so here I'm not using any kind of the securities per securities one spring securities so if you want to use this one or maybe if you want to integrate the jot one so similar kind of tutorial you will get already in my uh, channel you guys can uh, take the help from there and integrate over here the next one is get user by username where basically you need to pass the username and based on that it will face the user ne the next one is the again it's a gate mapping which will fetch get all user so if you see that this get all user basically it's a return list of user so that's why you need to return table with a list of user and the other one is the delete user delete user by id so this is about this user controller and next we need to use the event controller so event controller also having the similar kind of apis like get all events create event get event by id update event and the delete event all the things are having the similar kind of features only just we need to keeping those things as a separate controller even again like if you see this we have to use this rest controller annotations over here and the request mapping annotation over here right and also we have used this cross origin annotation because similar kind of also we need to use these apis from the angular if we are not going to use those as a cross origin then definitely we will receive the course error so now the thing is done okay from the uh, like uh, spring boot side now we can start the like application so here if you see this that event management already I have created over here this data so now we just need to see that uh, we just need to start this application so that this event and the user entities is created so we just need to start this applications from over here let it start if you see that it's uh, starting actually Tom Cat initialize on the port 8080 and the start complete okay we just need to check from the over here just uh, those tables okay if you see that table got created over here right but currently it doesn't have any record correct so this table has automatically got created once the application got started right so spring boot applications wise we are done now in next what we are going to do we need to create the angular applications and from there we need to like integrate this event apis and the user apis from there so that we can see that how this it will be look like so this is all about this tutorial now in next tutorial i am going to cover the front end part I will also like add this code into the github section. Don't forget to subscribe my channel. Please press the bell icon for further notification. If you guys have anything, please do let me know in the comment section. Thanks for your time. See you in my next videos. Bye bye.